Hello everyone, I'm Sir N. Xavier and welcome to the third episode of EAPP in Taglish. Previously, we talked about the structures of academic text and we learned about the two structures namely the essay format and the inbred format. For this session, we will talk about summarizing. Madami ang may ayaw o nahihirapan sa summarizing. But we are actually using it sa maraming pagkakataon sa buhay natin. Like when we retell a movie to a friend, o magkikwento ka sa parents mo about sa nangyari sa school mo, or sa simpleng pagkikwento mo lang sa kaibigan mo about your love life matters. Actually, summarizing is confusing naman talaga if you don't know how to do it right. But before we discuss some tips and techniques on how we can summarize better, let us define summarizing first. Summarizing is a brief restatement of main points. Tandaan, brief restatement. Ibig sabihin, uulitin mo lang yung sinabi ng author dun sa text na yun, pero maisi lamang. Summarizing is selecting out key features and using those to create a shortened version of the original text. Ibig sabihin, kapag nagsasummarize ka, pinipili mo lang yung main points para makagawa ka ng mas maiksing version ng text na yun. Remember, summarizing has two aims. Una, to reproduce the main idea and key points of the text. Yun nga, ulitin mo lang daw yung main idea at yung explanation ng main idea na yun. Second, to restate these in as few words as possible. Ibig sabihin, ulitin mo yung main idea at explanation ng main idea na yun na binigay ng author, pero in the shortest way possible. Kaya nga siya summary. Linawin lang natin na ang main idea ay ang topic ng text o ng paragraph. Habang ang key points naman ay yung information or arguments na ginamit ng author para ma-explain yung main idea o yung topic. Siguraduhin mo lang alam mo ang pinagkaiba ng main idea at key points para madali kang makapag-summarize. One thing you also should remember about summarizing is that you cannot put your opinion in it. Siyempre kung nagsasummarize lang naman tayo, hindi tayo gumagawa ng reaction paper. So you are not allowed to put any of your opinion in the summary. Focus ka lang dun sa text na sinasummarize mo. Ngayon, Gano'n ba dapat kahaba ang isang summary? Summaries can be made in one sentence or longer depending on the original text you're working on. Siyempre, mas mahaba or mas complex yung original text, mas magiging mahaba din ng bahagya yung summary mo. Pero kung one paragraph lang naman yung sinasummarize mo, it can be summarized in one or two sentences. Another thing you need to remember about summarizing, kahit na inuulit mo lang naman yung main idea at key points ng writer mo, you cannot quote extensively. Ibig sabihin, you cannot use the exact words from the original text, especially kung hindi mo mention yung author sa summary mo. Maaari kasi mo consider ang summary mo as a plagiarized work or isang kinopyang akda. Siyempre, may mga key terms or keywords na mahalagang masabi mo sa summary mo. Pwede mo naman silang kopyahin, siguraduhin mo lang na malalagyan mo sila ng quotation marks para may pakita na galing sila dun sa original text. Hindi man natin hilig ang summarizing, we should know that doing it actually has a lot of benefits. First, it helps you learn to identify key points of a text and ignore irrelevant information. Sabi nga natin pag nag-summarize tayo, we identify the main idea and the key points in the text. Kaya napapractice natin yung text analysis skills natin. Second, summarizing improves our memory and by extension, our comprehension. Siyempre, pag nag-summarize tayo, we read and we try to remember the important details we see from the original text. Kaya na-develop natin yung long-term memory natin, pati na rin ang ating reading comprehension. Third, summarizing is an effective tool to self-evaluate what has been understood about the original text. Kasi nga, again, pag nag-summarize tayo, inuulit lang naman natin yung main idea at key points. Kaya in return, we get to check how well do we understand the original text. Kasi nga, hindi mo naman masasummarize ang isang text kung hindi mo siya naiintindihan. Now, here are some tips on how you can summarize with ease. First, read the text very carefully. Basahin mo lang ng maigi, paulit-ulit mong basahin hanggang maintindihan mo. Second, ask yourself these questions. What is the main idea? Ano ba yung topic ng text na to? And what are the crucial details necessary for supporting the main idea? Kumbaga, paano niya in-explain yung topic? Ano-ano yung mahalagang details na yun? Third, highlight, underline, or jot down what you think is the main point of the text. Pag naunawaan mo na yung original text, mark mo na yung tingin mong main idea at key points para mas madali para sa yung mag-summarize later on. Fourth, when summarizing an essay, outline first the writer's arguments. Kapag medyo mahaba-haba yung sinasummarize mo like an essay, mag-outline ka doon muna ng main ideas ng essay na yon para mas madali sa yung masummarize yung buong text. Finally, summarize in chronological order. 
Ibig sabihin, summarize mo lang daw how the key points were written in the original text. Sundin mo na yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng pagkakabigay ng ideas dun sa text. Naintindihan niyo ba yung tips na to? Look at these example paragraphs and how they are summarized. Children spend a very large proportion of their daily lives in school. They go there to learn, not only in a narrow academic sense, but in the widest possible interpretation of the world. About themselves, about being a person within a group of others, about the community in which they live in, and about the world around them. Schools provide the setting in which such learning takes place. This is from Leiden S. in 1985. Now, for us to summarize a text, we have to make sure that we understand it fully. And what we need to do is to identify the main idea and the key points. Remember, the main idea is the topic of the paragraph or the text. If you're thinking about how can we easily find the main idea or the topic of a paragraph or a text, all you have to do is to look at the first or last sentence of the paragraph. Remember this, the main idea is in the topic sentence. And the topic sentence usually is found at the beginning or at the end of a paragraph, meaning it's either the first sentence or the last sentence. Ngayon, tignan natin tong paragraph na to. What do you think is the topic sentence of this paragraph? Kung baga, alin ba dito yung sentence na nandoon yung main idea ng buong paragraph na to? Kung baga, kung saan umikot yung buong idea? Again, sabi natin, ang topic sentence or yung main idea usually matatagpuan sa first sentence or sa last sentence. Sabi dito, Children spend a very large proportion of their daily lives in school. They go there to learn, not only in a narrow academic sense, but in the widest possible interpretation of the world about themselves, about being a person within a group of others, about the community in which they live, and about the world around them. Schools provide the setting in which such learning takes place. Tignan natin yung first sentence. Sabi sa first sentence, Children spend a very large proportion of their daily lives in school. So, kung yung first sentence na yun, ang pinaka-topic sentence ng paragraph na to, dapat lahat ng sasabihin niya sa mga sumunod na sentence ay nag-explain Nung sinabi niyang, children spend a very large proportion of their daily lives in school. Na halos buong buhay daw ng mga sadyante na sa eskwelahan sila. Tignan naman natin yung last sentence. The last sentence is, schools provide the setting in which such learning takes place. Ibig sabihin, sa eskwelahan daw, ang eskwelahan daw ang nagbibigay ng lugar or ng, yun nga, ng place kung saan natututo ang mga sadyante. Now, alin kaya sa dalawang sentence na to yung topic na ina-explain ng ibang sentences sa paragraph? Yes, the topic sentence is the last sentence. Schools provide the setting in which such learning takes place. Paano niya in-explain yung school daw yung nagbibigay ng lugar kung saan natututo yung mga bata? Sinabi niya na kasi doon daw sa schools, doon natututo yung mga sudyante about the world, about themselves, about being with a group of others, about the community, and about the world. Ngayon, you already know what is the main idea and the key points. So yun lang yung mga lalagay mo sa summary mo. Again, we cannot put all of these exact words in our summary. Kasi nga, kapag ilagay natin yun, pwedeng maging plagiarized work yung gawa natin. So medyo magka-paraphrase tayo. Ibig sabihin, i-restate natin siya using our own words. Look at this example summary. Sabi dito, schools are places for children to learn about life, themselves, other people, as well as academic information. Kasi nga, sabi sa paragraph, schools daw provide the setting. Schools daw yung nagsisilbing lugar. So, pwede mong sabihin na, schools are places. Now, anong sinabi niya bukod dun sa may schools provide the setting or the lugar para matuto? Na dun nga daw natututo yung mga bata sa ako sa mundo, about themselves. So, nilagay natin dun sa summary na schools are places for children to learn about life. Yung sabi natin kanina, interpretation of the world. Themselves. Yun, sabi, about themselves. About the community in which they live in and about being a person within a group of others. So, other people. As well as academic information. Gets po ba? So, again... When you try to summarize a paragraph or a text, all you have to do first is to identify the main idea and the key points. Let's look at this other example. Ito, mas madali to. From 93 million in 2015, the country has a total population of 103.3 million today. 
This number is composed of 15% senior citizens, 49.5% youth or aging 14 to 40 years old, 20.5% other adults, 41 to 59 years old, and 15% children, 13 years old and below. These percentages are estimates as they can change through mortality and aging. This is from Kowanko and in 2016. Now, if we look closely to this paragraph, what do you think is the topic of this paragraph? Again, when looking for the topic of the paragraph or the main idea of the paragraph, kailangan mo lang hanapin yung topic sentence. At again, ang topic sentence ay either nasa umpisa o nasa huli ng paragraph. So, tingnan mo yung first and, set and last sentence itong paragraph na to. Anong kaya sa dalawa na yan yung diniscuss dun sa buong paragraph? Very good. Ang topic ng paragraph na to ay ang population. So, ang topic sentence natin ay from 93 million in 2015, the country has a total population of 100.3 million today. Yan ang topic natin. Yan ang main idea natin. Now, anong key points or ano yung mga supporting information na binigay niya para ma-explain yung topic nating population of 100.3 million? Ang ginawa niya para ma-explain yung topic na yon, binigay niya yung composition. Binigay na, binigay, in-explain niya yung population na 103.3 million by giving the percentages. Sinabi niya na yung 103 million na yon, 15% non senior citizen, 49.5% non youth, 20.5% non adults. Tapos, yung iba naman, yung 15%. So, now that we know the main idea and the key points of this paragraph, yun lang ang inilipat natin sa ating summary. But again, our summary should not look like a plagiarized work. So, kailangan mong ibahin yung mga words na gagamitin mo. Although, pwede kang kumopya ng ilang words ng key terms. Pero, syempre, you have to use your own words. Kailangan i-paraphrase mo pa din siya. Look at this summary. Sabi dito, the Philippines has a population of 103.3 million. Tama, kasi sabi sa summary, mayroon daw tayong population of 103.3 million. Now, nasa yung key points? Sa summary natin, nilagay natin na composed of senior citizens, midlife adults, children, and the youth as the biggest fraction. So yun lang, binigay mo lang din yung composition na binigay niya na may senior citizen, na may youth, na may midlife adults, yung other adults daw, and meron daw youth as the biggest fraction. Bakit mo nilagyan as the biggest fraction? Kasi hindi mo na inindicate yung mga numbers, di ba? Kasi nga pag inindicate mo yung numbers, hindi parang yun lang din yung pinaka-text na original. So hindi mo na sinama yun. Pero dun sa may youth, nilagay mo na sila yung biggest fraction kasi nga makikita dun sa mga percentage na sila naman talaga yung pinakamalaking fraction na 49.5% are youth. Kaya nilagay mo sa summary na ganun. Malinaw po ba? Again, tandaan natin that when we are summarizing, all we have to do is to look for the main idea which can be found in topic sentence na either yung first or last sentence and the key points o yung mga important explanation na binigay niya to explain the main idea. Now, there are different techniques in summarizing but for this session, we will be discussing the two most common techniques. First is summarizing with reference citation. Sabi natin kanina, mahalagang ma-mention ng writer sa summary mo para maiwasan ng plagiarism. Yun ang purpose ng technique na ito because reference means source or author and citation means mentioning or recognition. At sa pag-cite ng reference natin sa ating summary, we follow a consistent format. Remember these formats kasi magagamit nyo to in your essays, lalo na sa research papers ninyo later in your academic life. Una ay ang author citation in the body of the sentence. Simple lang, isasama mo lang sa pinaka-sentence ng summary mo yung pangalan o usually apelido ng author kasama yung taon kung kailan niya yung sinabi o sinulat na nakalagi sa brackets o parentheses. Look at this example. To understand author citation in the body of the sentence, let's go back to our example a while ago about the population. We have already understood the meaning of this example from our previous discussion. We summarized it as this way. And remember, our author here is Ko Wang Po and in 2016. If we are going to apply the author citation in the body of the sentence, it is very important that you take note of the author and the year it was written. So, ayun. Lipat lang natin yung summary kanina. Again, ito yung summary natin. Isasama mo lang ngayon dyan yung pangalan ng author tsaka yung taon kung kailan niya yung sinabi o sinulat. Look at this author citation in the body of 
the sentence. Yun lang din. Yun lang din pinaka-summary na yon. Ang pinagkaiba lang, idinagdag mo dun sa sentence mo yung pangalan ng author mo at yung taon kung kailan niya yung sinabi or sinulat. Sir, aside from using this format, ano pa pong pwede namin gawin bukod dito? So, you can also use according to kuwang ko in 2016. So, sabihin mo na yung pinaka-summary. Or pwede mo rin gamitin na kuwang ko in 2016 stated that those are some of the techniques you can use in author citation in the body of the sentence. Again, all you have to do here is to add the name of the author or the reference in the sentence of your summary. And then have the year enclosed in parentheses. Ganun lang. Pangalawa ay ang author citation in brackets. Dito naman, we do not put the name of the author in the sentence. Hinihiwalay natin siya at ilalagay sa dulo ng sentence or ng summary sa loob ng parentheses kasama yung year kung kailan niya yung sinabi o sinulat. Look at this example. So let's go back to this example. Sabi nga natin kanina, ayan ang summary, ayan ang author. So with this summary and with that author, pag ginawa natin siyang author citation in brackets, hihiwalay mo lang yung pangalan ng author at ilalagay mo siya sa dulo ng summary mo. Look at this. See? So, it's the same summary. Yun na yun pa rin siya. Pero, hiniwalay lang natin yung pangalan ng author at nilagay natin sa dulo. Sa loob ng brackets or parentheses. Another way to summarize easily is to use graphic organizers. Ano ba yung graphic organizers? These are shapes, lines, figures, drawings, or sketches that are used to make a visual display of key information. Ibig sabihin, ito yung mga madalas nating makitang mga tables, pie graph, bar graph, line graph, Venn diagrams na pinang-organize natin ng mga information. Para sa akin, ito yung pinakamadaling gamitin technique. Pero syempre, dapat careful sa pagpili ng graphic organizer na gagamitin nyo para sa inyong summary. Syempre, nakadepende sa content ng original text yung graphic organizer na gagamitin mo. Look at these common graphic organizers and how you can use them. The first one is the T-chart. You can use the T-chart for a comparison, cause and effect, mnemonics or acronyms. Ganito ang itsura niya. The next one is the grid. The grid can be used for comparison, for changes over time, for charts. This is how it looks like. Para lang din siyang table. Next is the spider map, also known as concept mapping or word map. So it can be used for brainstorming ideas, vocabulary, and examples of a central topic. Ganda yung itsura niya. Ayan. Next one is the timeline. The timeline is used for historical events, for sequencing, and for biography. Pag nag-summarize kayo ng biography ng isang tao, you can use this timeline to summarize it. Kasi nga, biography is written in, in chronological order or, or by the time of events in the life of a person. So, ganyan ang isura niya. So, pwede siyang pahiga or horizontal. Pwede rin naman siyang vertical or patayo. Depende sa inyong preferred organization. The next one is table. I think this is the most commonly used graphic organizer kasi pwede siya sa lahat ng klase ng data. Comparison mo yan, cause and effect, examples, kahit ano pa yan. So, this is how it looks like. The next one is the Venn diagram. I believe you have used this many times in your academic life. So this is used, of course, for comparison and contrast. This is how it looks like. So you have two circles intertwining with each other, and then sa makabilang side, lalagay mo yung differences, yung sariling katangian, yung mga bagay na pinagko-compare mo, tapos sa gitna naman nila ay yung pagkakaparehas nila or yung similarities. The next one is the H-graph. This is like the Venn diagram because it's used for similarities and differences or comparison and contrast. Ang pinagkaiba lang nila, yung shape. The next one is the fishbone. The fishbone can be used for cause and effect. So, ganyan yung sura niya. It depends on you on how you would want to put there the cause and effect. Then we have the pie graph. This is very familiar to you. This is used for compositions or fractions. The next one is the bar graph. This is used for comparison and contrast and tracking progress or growth. You can see this at the back of your Meralco bill. And finally, we have the line graph. This is like the bar graph because it can also be used for comparison and contrast 
and for tracking progress or growth. Look at this. Here's an example of a text summarized using a graphic organizer. Balikan natin yung example natin kanina tungkol sa population. Sabi natin kanina, ang topic ng paragraph na to ay yung population ng 103.3 million. At ang key points na binigay ng author para ma-explain yung topic na population na yon ay binigay niya yung iba't ibang percentage ng population na yon, Yung composition niya. Knowing that, ano kaya yung pinakamagandang graphic organizer ang gamitin natin to summarize this text? Yes? The graphic organizer to be used is the pie graph because we're talking about composition, about fractions, about percentages. So this is how it will look like. Yeah. So in a pie, we cut it into the percentages given by the author. This is rounded off, but you can still put it in the exact numbers as the author said. And remember, there should be legends of the color to identify which of those portions belong to those information given by the author. Easy, right? To recall what we have discussed, summarizing is briefly restating the main idea and key points of an original text. And we had two techniques in summarizing, the reference citation and the use of graphic organizers. That's it. That's our lesson for this session. Thank you for staying with me until the end of this video. Please make sure to subscribe to our channel so you'd be updated of our next uploads. Once again, I am Sir NG Javier and this is EAPP in Daglish.